So we're going to start off um, logged into the district's portal page and you want to find the Pearson Easy Bridge and it depends on your browser how many tiles are on each page of the portal um, but I'm not going to find it until I get to the teacher number two then I'm going to click on the Pearson Easy Bridge. Then I'm going to find my name. Um, you're probably only going to have your own name here but a few of us who need to share classes with another teacher, the district can allow you to see the other person's um, account that goes for Schoology and Q and all that stuff. So Mrs. Lenardi and I both share each other's accounts. But anyway, you want to find the one that says Envision Math, California Common Core, and it will have your grade level on there. Go ahead and click on that. And when your students take the test, they actually get in the same way. It looks exactly the same for them. So it's a little tricky for fourth graders. You might have to really walk them through if you're doing this with the primary grades. Anyway, once you're inside, what we're going to do is create a test that the kids can take. You can do any number of assignments. I'm just going to show you how to give them a test. So I clicked on programs. I should probably tell you that. Um, you will see the entire, all the topics for your whole book laid out here. I'm just going to start with Topic number one. And then you'll notice for each little assignment it says assign. And if you want them to watch a video, you can click assign. And it'll tell you when they have watched it, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to scroll down, find the test. Here's the regular test. If you click over here, it's just multiple choice. I guess that's what these little icons are showing you. Um, and you can walk through and see what the test is like before you assign it to them. It's also in printed form all over the place, but this is just one thing you can do, all right? But to give them the, to assign them the test, you click on the assign button. Now I'm going to show you, they also have the alternate test, so you could theoretically assign one test to one student and assign the alternate test to the student sitting next to them. If you had any need to do that. Oh, it's dark in here. I exist. Um, I'm going to give them the digital enhanced topic test because this is the one that is very much like the Smarter Balance test that we're taking in the spring. All right. Um, the title will automatically default to Topic 1 Digital Enhanced Topic Test. I usually just say Topic 1 Test so I don't have to confuse the kids too much. That's the one they're going to look for. To assign it to a class, you have to click in this box and then just start typing in your last name and your class will come up. And that now has said it's assigned to my class. So over here where Mrs. Lenardi and I are doing the same thing, I could put her name and assign it to their students as well, which is what I usually do. Um, for this sample, I'm just going to put myself. Now what I don't like about this, what's a little different, I've been using Schoology for many years and Schoology when you do an um an assessment, it gives you a very narrow window if you want. You can open up the assessment at 8.13 a.m. and then close it at 9.15 and nobody will be able to see it. The students can't see it any other time. So far I haven't found out how to do this on this one and this is the only page I get to create it so I don't think you can. So it's my only criticism about it. But if I wanted the test to be tomorrow, I would click on tomorrow's date and then the due date, you would think you would want to do the same day but we always have kids who are absent so I've been making the due date like a week later <laughs> so that if a kid's gone for a few days when they come back in if I don't do that and I tell them to go take the test they won't see it if it's after the due date because before the start date and after the due date the students can't see it they can only see it in that window if you have any instructions to type in there um, notes are required or something like that. You can put that there so the students will see that when they start to take the test. I just usually leave that blank. And then you, you can click on assign. Once you click on assign you've created the assignment and on the 17th it will be open and they can start taking the test. So part of the reason I like the narrower window is because in your upper grades some kids could take advantage of that. Maybe they could take the test at 2 a.m. <laughs> or at 6 a.m. before they get to school with some things to help them. So if you're worried about that, don't create the assignment until the moment you're going to give the test. All right, so what does it look like once you've created a test? 
To see that, I'm going to click on Classes. If we go back to the home page, it's the easiest place to see it, but you can also click here. When you click on Classes, again, I'm sharing with Mrs. Lenardi, so you can see that. I want to click on my own class, and I'm going to click on Assignments, because my kids have actually already taken two tests. And as you can see from the results, now this one, only a few of them have been scored. Um, it's pretty frightening. And it's a little frightening because of how poorly they did on these tests. But it's actually, I think, a good thing because it's going to give me an opportunity between now and the end of the year to give them these tests over and over again, show them the results afterwards, talk about it, talk about the difficult problems, so that when Smarter Balance comes around, they'll have a little practice on it. Am I politicizing too much? I'll shorten this. Anyway, if I click on the test that they took, it gives me the overall status over here. It tells me when things were starting and due. Um, and I can click on the student status. Uh, this particular student got 28%. Not ideal, right? Um, if we want to review what they did, we can click on the review button. And then you can actually go through this question by question. So here's number one. Their answer was incorrect. I can look at it, and it shows me the exact question. They show me their answer, and I have a key, and I can see what they did wrong. So that's kind of nice. You can see how the kids did. Um, but what I want to show you is how to score one. So I need to go back to the other test. If I click on this left arrow, it takes me back to my choices. So this is a test they took last week, and I'm not finished scoring it yet. When I click on it and say review, or view student status, it shows me this green section here tells me the student completed the test and they submitted it. It's one of the things they'll have to do, but it's one of their options when they take it down at the bottom. All right, so I want to score this student's test. I'm going to click on a little button over here underneath their name. It says score test. If you've already scored them, it'll say edit score which means you can go back and change the score. Um, or you can review it just to see how they did. But this student I have not scored yet. So I'm going to click Score Test. And it only gives me the six questions that I have to score. So question one, question four, the ones that you don't see here, those are all multiple choice. If I want to see them, I click on All Answers. And the student got one out of one on this one, missed that one, missed that one, missed that one telling you it's dismal for now, but hopefully it'll get better. So if I want to go back to the ones that I'm going to score, teacher scored questions, it's not scored yet, so I click on it. You can see their answer here. This is again straight, straight like common, straight out of Common Core, straight out of the Smarter Balance. Justify your response. We've talked about that and they still, even with the questions they know, let me get to one where they attempted to answer the question. So the answer is explain why you agree with Nicole or Ellie. And and the student says, Nicole, because I knew there is about in each month is 32 days, so I did 30 times 20 equals 600, and Nicole is closer. That's a fabulous answer for the question. They had to do estimating by rounding and multiply the two two-digit numbers, and this is actually spot on. It's one of the best ones I've seen so far. So I would give this student one out of one, and then I say save and continue. It takes me to the next problem. Um, and what was her mistake? She ran it down instead of up or did not know how many days were in a month. Excellent. You can actually give decimal point values. So if you wanted to give some extra credit, you could do 1.5, and it would give a half a point for this particular problem. I haven't encountered any issues with that so far. Um, so you can give partial credit. You can give 0.5 if somebody was beginning to solve a problem and they didn't get the answer there. So that gives you some flexibility in your scoring. I wasn't too happy about every question being worth one point, especially when some of them were multiple step problems. That's another thing I'd like to be able to control, but so far I can't see that I can change that value. So if I give him that score, that's what he has right now. When you're all finished, it will say review and send scores up here. And then it'll say send score to all students, which means when the students log in to their Pearson account, they will see how they did um, on the test. Finally, once they're done testing, you want to look at their data. 
You click on the data tab, either up here, or you can go to the home page and click on data. Um, click on your class. And if I say class results by assignment, it will show me how they've done. Now, because I haven't finished any of my tests yet, it does not have anything here. But it does show me how many students are still working on particular assignments, which could be good. And that's, that's for any assignment, not just tests. It also tells you how long they spend on an assignment, which is kind of cool. Some interesting information you can see. And if you click on it, you can see the individual students. So the student who got 100% spent 43 minutes, and the students that got 60 spent 19 and 24. That's amazing information that I think I'm going to share with my class. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? In the future, it will be showing me, I hope, one of the options where was that class mastery by standard. It's going to list all the standards and show me who's mastered it, but I haven't put anything in yet.